Let's talk about the process of double clutching. In the shifting chapter of your textbook, chapter eight, they describe step by step the double clutch shifting process. Step one, release the throttle. Step two, press the clutch pedal halfway down. Remember, we don't want to accidentally encounter that input shaft brake. Step three, shift to neutral. Step four, release the clutch pedal all the way up. Step five, when you get to the correct RPM, press the clutch pedal down halfway again. And step six, move the shift lever into the next gear. Step seven, release the clutch pedal. Step eight, apply the throttle to accelerate in the next gear. That's what it looks like on paper. The problem that a new student will have the first time we get out in the truck and they try to do this is they are thinking about all of these steps. And when you are doing double clutch shifting, it is not step one and then step two and then step three and so on because that just doesn't work. In reality, step one, step two, and step three all happen together and very quickly. Step four and the first part of step five happen together. And this RPM change doesn't take very long. Then step 5B, if you want to call it that, and step six happen together. And once you're in the new gear, step seven and step eight are kind of blended together in order to get a nice smooth finish to the shift. And this whole process from the beginning to the end, if you are shifting up from a lower gear to a higher gear, might take 1.5 seconds. That's if we're shifting up. If we're shifting down, because it takes a little bit more time to accurately raise that RPM, all the math that we did in those other segments, a downshift might take two and a half seconds by comparison. But you can't be thinking of the steps as separate elements when you're trying to do this in the vehicle. It just doesn't work that way. It's a coordinated eye on a tachometer, hands and feet working together on throttle pedal, clutch pedal, both feet are involved, right arm on the stick, one hand involved, the other hand has to be able to do something completely different and keep the truck in the lane, not run over anybody. Your left hand and your right hand do need to be able to not pay attention to each other. But the whole thing is a smooth, flowing, blended sequence of events. All of these things are actually happening, but they're not this step, then this step, then this step, because you've already missed about four gears if you're doing it that slowly. So why do we double clutch? We double clutch because without synchronizers in the gearbox, the RPM matching has to come from you, the driver, instead of a machine. And because it's never going to be perfect, we need to open the clutch to take it out of gear so that we're not dragging against a lot of friction from residual torque. When we go to put it in the new gear, we need to open the clutch to get rid of impact and friction from a less than perfect match. But to do the RPM change itself, the clutch has to be closed so that the engine and the transmission are hooked together because all of our talk about RPM is not engine RPM. It's transmission input RPM. You have to match the speed of the input component of the transmission to the speed of the output component of the transmission. The output side of the transmission is determined by road speed because it's hooked to the wheels. So whatever your road speed is, that's it. The input side is entirely up to you. And that's where all of that math in those shifting segments comes into play. But to actually use that information, you have to be able to do a smooth, coordinated sequence of events here. But it doesn't take very long. About one and a half seconds for a good upshift. About two and a half seconds, because the RPM part's a little trickier on a downshift. But it doesn't take very long.